is good, Greg, and we're here today. We're going to be building a worm farm. Now, the reason why I'm laughing and running is because my goats keep trying to jump up on me. See, watch this. Because they, they oh, come on, man. His feet are dirty, too. Anyways, the reason that they're trying to jump on me is because this is the bucket I usually feed them in. I'll throw it down on the ground, let them realize it's completely empty. That way, maybe they'll stop harassing me. What you looking at, Chad? Now, I guess the first thing we should talk about is what exactly do I mean by a worm farm? Now, whether you're looking to sell worms or just want a good spot to get worms whenever you want to go fishing this worm farm applies to both now the first step to making a worm farm is you got to think where do worms like to live they like to live in a damp area under something that's kind of about it and so the plan i've got an area right over there under the hill i'm gonna take this pallet lay it that way that way this side of the pallet with a lot of planks will be on the ground that'll give us more surface area for the worms to stay up and under now you don't have to have a pallet literally guys you can have a stump like this put that flat part on the ground it'll work perfectly you can have a piece of plywood like that that'll work you can have a cinder blocks work really good even bricks or if you can just go out and find a bunch of flat rocks literally anything flat that can sit up under the ground and stay moist under that's where worms like to live now the reason i've actually came to this location is because one I'm gonna steal that pallet from my goats, but then also, I just figured this out a couple days ago, but I tried to lift this up, and hot dog, can y'all see that? There's, this is already a stinking worm farm. Like, oh, oh my goodness. This is unreal how many worms live here. And so I was thinking, why are they here? One, it's moist. Two, it's something to get under. But then I've also been throwing hay on there, and the hay that slipped on the bottom, they're actually eating the hay. Because worms, if you don't know, they're actually classified as decomposers. So basically, all living things that have actually died, that's what they eat. And kind of turn it back into dirt. Anyway, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to take the pallet, but then I'm also going to get the worms that I can from under there. Put them right here in this bucket, and then we can go repopulate my new area with the worms worms that we can find from under here. Now this may not be super easy, but I'm just gonna flip it over and start grabbing them as fast as I can. There's no way I'm gonna be able to get all of them. I'll start off just getting these. I mean, it's not gonna be pretty. It's just basically picking up worms out of the mud. Oh yeah, and if you're scared to get dirty, maybe you making worm farms, just maybe it's not for you, you know? Then again, it's just dirt, so you'll be fine. That'll be all we get off here. Now I'm just gonna come in here, grab some of these out of the ground right here. We'll just grab them in mass. Just grab as many as we possibly can, man. Be honest. We'll just try and get a bunch. And this is how many worms are here with just, what, five planks showing? If I flip it over on the other side where all the planks are still there, you can see the potential for a great worm farm. I don't think I've ever seen this many, to be honest. Not in one spot. Worm farming's not for everybody. But while we're all in quarantine, we don't have anything else to do. So why not build a worm farm? Because I promise, guys, it will come in handy. And by the end of the video, we're actually going to use it, take some of the worms that we grow, and go fishing with them. Now, since we're actually building a worm farm, the worm should come naturally. You won't have to populate it. But, I mean, all these are here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take them anyhow. And as for the species worm i'm about positive these are red worms so i mean if you go out and buy a pack of 24 of these they can kind of get expensive at walmart so if you fish with worms very much at all over just the course of a summer you could save quite a lot of money by building your own worm farm plus if you have chickens you can feed them snacks i guess all right guys i've actually been picking worms for about i don't know maybe close to 20 15 minutes and uh well i've got i've got literally a ton of worms but could you guess who showed up to ruin the party yes that's right we got stinking chickens now i've got as long as it takes them to walk over here to collect more worms because once they get over here there's no way i can compete but as for now guys we got a lot of worms to start up but this is all secondary guys this isn't really what we need to start the worm farm the only thing that we really need is that pallet and a good wet area. And so now we're actually down to the location where I'm actually wanting to start my worm farm. It's a pretty basic location, guys. It's actually right up against this building, so it's going to be in the shade a lot of the day. Which is a good thing. Shade's always good for a worm farm. If it's right out in the middle of the sun, it's going to dry up. It's not going to be moist. It's probably not going to hold worms at all. So pick a good, shady, wet place. If you can step on the ground and water comes out, like here in Kentucky, it's a good spot. Now, as you can see in my spot, it's actually still got grass. But if you want results really fast, I would say, you know what? Go get a weed eater. Go get a hammer. Chop up this ground pretty good till it almost like a garden but as for us right now i have time i'm not trying to rush anything i'm just gonna set it down just like that it really won't be long until you get worms and you can notice my hand is absolutely nasty right now yeah it is because this is worm farm i mean hey 
It's a whole lot cheaper than $4.29 at Walmart. Worms can get pretty expensive. That's why if you're kind of wanting to do this for a business to make money, there's a really good opportunity here. And over there at the old worm place, we never really got to see the chickens attack any worms. So uh, well, looking in here, I think we have a little bit of a surplus, if you know what I mean. Like I told you guys, there's a lot of worms. I don't know if you believed me or not, but there was a lot. We'll just, uh, we'll get a little pinch here and uh, well, we'll gift the chickens some little treat. That's another really good reason for a worm farm. So you can treat your chickens. See, watch this. They're about to go crazy for it they're right there there they go there's the first one figured it out the rest haven't figured it out yet but oh well i guess it's a one it's a one chicken buffet all right there they go now she's got competition at least the two that figured it out had a really good time had a really good snack i don't know what's wrong with the other ones i guess they've just never seen a worm before anyways let's populate my worm farm now now since it is grass under here they're not gonna stay here immediately you may be asking kennel dude where are they gonna go well they're most likely just gonna go down in the ground and then whenever the grass dies they'll probably come back up that's my prediction i'm not a biologist but as for these worms we're just uh we're gonna dump them right there and uh, they'll figure out where they wanna go. They're worms, they're smart, kind of. They can figure it out. I don't know, maybe, do they have a brain? Do worms have a brain? That's a good question. I don't know if they do or not. I mean, they are just a worm, but then, I mean, they do have instinct, so I guess they kind of have a brain. Kind of have to. Hey, Siri. Do worms have brains? Yes, earthworms do have brains. You go, earthworms. But now for this, here we go. We'll pull it over. Lay it right on top of the worms. And now they can crawl wherever they want to. Here in about two weeks, we're going to be able to come in here and get all kinds of worms. But just because we can't collect worms right there, I'm going to take you over to a worm farm I've had for like probably over a year now. It's super similar to the one we just made, made out of a pallet. And here it is. You can tell it's been here for a while because it's even covered up with some leaves. But we'll pull it up here and then you can look in there and see all the worms that's there. But see, we can just come in here and same, same as up there. There's worms, 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 worms even right here. And I don't feed these worms. Keep that in mind, guys. Those worms that we found up there, those were kind of being fed. Fed with the hay that my goats never ate. So if you eat a banana, go throw your banana peel under your pallet or your wood or your brick. It'll actually provide food for your worms so that they can grow. And it is the next day. I promised you guys we were going to go fishing. And well, I'm going to deliver. My goats are absolutely going crazy crazy listen to them i don't know why what do they want food i already fed you oh my goodness dude did you just try to attack me he was going full speed and ran right into the fence i don't know if he thought i had food or if he was trying to cheap shot me while i wasn't look but i tell you what guys either way Mad respect, bro. But anyways, right now we are going to get some worms. We're at my old worm farm, the one where we uh, looked at some worms yesterday. Farming worms are, oh gosh, here comes the cavalry, son. All coming in at once. What are they going to do? Jump on my back? I ain't giving you a piggyback ride. You just go back up to the house, son. Anyways, farming worms organically, I would say this way, like they're uncontained. It's pretty easy. It's just a piece of wood laying there, and then I flip it up, and I believe I can probably get a worm out of it. Now, I did only collect one worm, but fun fact about this, this plank has literally been there three days and it already had a worm on it. long story short guys we got us i don't know if you can see in there we got us about 10 good worms i don't think we'll be using a ton of them though here we go and we're good let me just tell you guys i expect this to take no more than one cast to catch your first bluegill that's how confident i am in just well the bluegill's ability to love worms the rigging pretty simple just a standard spinning rod that way it's a lightweight tackle for lightweight fish but then the actual rig not a sinker not a bobber just a hook fishing weightless literally the only downside for fishing with just a hook is that you can't cast far if you can get over that or if you're just dropping it down fishing vertically that's no problem to you but i do have a bobber in my pocket we'll try that too but i'm just gonna come in here hook this worm i want it to be able to I want it to be able to like swim around kind of because i do see a bass right here and i wouldn't care to try to catch a bass on a live worm definitely wouldn't be the first time but i don't know it's pretty effective for bass because bass like to eat worms too it's why they eat wacky worms and all that stuff now to identify bites with this if it's clear water just watch your worm and if you see them bite it that's when you'll know you have a bite but then if the water's dirty and you can't see your bait just watch your line floating on top of the water and if it jumps or starts going going out real fast or starts curving over to the side that means a fish has it in their mouth go ahead and set the hook now my prediction was wrong it has already taken longer than my first cast that's no problem I don't think that's going to be much of a deal. I don't think it'll take very long at all. As soon as a fish sees the worm, I think he's pretty well going to take it. Another good thing about fishing with red worms is that you can literally catch everything because like chicken is to mammals, worms are to fish. Everything likes to eat them. There he is. Got him. There he is. Oh, I think he's a bluegill. He's coming right towards me. Bluegill, but listen guys, that's exactly what you're looking for. That's exactly the 
probably the, if you go fishing with worms, that's the number one thing you're going to catch is bluegill. Pull him right on up here. He's a nice looking bluegill too. We're going to name her Sally because she looks like one. Anyone with me? Also, one more item of business before we really get into fishing. Uh, let me see here. You have to hit the like button. You have to subscribe. Okay, that's basically the only two things I need you to do. After that, I'll just uh, keep on fishing. So I'll wait on you. And uh, yeah, thanks for hitting the like button if you did it sally would be proud no but for real guys if you're not subscribed do that hit the like button guys i want to get 10,000 likes on a video i know that we rarely ever get 10,000 likes on a video but i'd really like to do it i know we can because we used to but we've not done it in a while so if you can go ahead and do that for me let's try the bobber now we'll go about a foot and a half up that's usually a pretty good depth for bluegill all around and then a lot of times if you're going to use a bobber you can go ahead and put a weight right here that way it'll actually pull it down to the depth you're fishing but i don't have one handy with me so i don't think it should cause too big of a problem now bonus with fishing with the bobber is one you have a strike indicator so you'll know exactly whenever you're getting bites but also casting distance because it does add a lot of weight so now right over there by the brush pile i couldn't hardly reach it earlier i can uh very easily cast right over there right exactly where i want to cast and then i can just wash the bobber i don't know if y'all can see it on the gopro or not but my bobber is just chilling there if it starts dabbling, 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 goes under, I'm setting the hook and I'm going to eat this fish right up here on the bank. Oh, and also one more thing I forgot to say, but hats are actually on sale on the website. We're doing it. I'm not really sure. To eat. Well, you actually don't have much time left. Since it is Saturday, I think the sale ends tomorrow. But all snapback hats and boonie hats, they're actually $14.99 where they were originally like $18. Bucks, so if you want a hat, maybe it's for Easter or something. Today is the day, Gerald. Get your hat. Kendall Gray, what I got to say and it is actually the next day guys i'm sorry about this but we didn't end up catching a single more bluegill but here's the thing what you didn't see is my cousin actually come up he was like hey buddy i like, how's up he's like what you fishing with i was like worms he's like hey i got news for you worms don't work here i was like hold up wait a minute what you talking about willis he's like yeah the other day i came out here and i was using worms and i caught one fish then i switched to a biscuit and i caught five i was like oh snap hold the phone hide your kids this can't be happening but it was indeed happening i don't know what's wrong with these fish i don't know what their problem is but they did not want worms but if you don't fish much trust me guys red worms are amazing and literally they're supposed to work everywhere for everything it's just i don't know maybe the bacterial maybe the moon phases that's that's a really good excuse if you ever go fishing and it just don't go your way go ahead and say it's the moon phases because most of the time people's going to believe you because they don't understand the moon phases anyhow little do they know we don't either. But that ain't stopping us from calling it an excuse but anyways as you can see this is a pool pond and if you remember there's actually fish in here that we stalked not too long ago my arm movement's getting really rapid now but anyways over here on the right we have a bunch of minnows still a bunch of minnows it's just kind of green kind of hard to see them and i actually have no idea where they're at over on the left however it is a lot clearer however there are three bluegill exactly what we was trying to catch over at that one pond and that's actually where we got these bluegill too that same pond we was fishing with however i was using bread that day go figure but anyways here's the plan guys i'm actually going to unstock these fish i'm going to take them out of the pool put them back in the real pond i mean to be honest guys they're in good shape they're healthy they might be happy maybe i don't know but i mean long story short just check them out there's one there's one there's really not much going on do i think this is inhumane no. Listen, I was doing a little Google search and I found that PETA, you know, PETA, which is, I, which is, I don't know, something that really likes animals. They said riding a horse is inhumane because horses don't like that. Now, I don't know what horse they interviewed, but I want to know why, how do they know that horses don't like that? Why would someone say riding a horse or a camel is inhumane? Like that's, I feel like that's literally what they were made for. I mean, take it or leave it, guys. You can either ride it or eat it. I think riding it is the better option. But I just imagine, what would PETA say for fishing? I know they think fishing's bad. But what would they say about trapping? They would hate me. I'll just go grab a worm. I've already got my fishing pole. Dip it in right in front of their face. See if they bite it. They might bite it. They might not. You never know. Let's find out together. Check out them apples. Well, technically it's a red worm, but you get the point. All right, I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see me or not, but at least you can hear me and that's basically the same thing. If you can hear me, you can imagine what I look like. I'd hate to know what y'all are imagining. One right here in this corner. So I'm actually just going to try to dip my worm right in on top of it. You probably don't understand what it is. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, these fish, uh, they don't want to be caught. So I'm going to try to catch a big, uh, big, big dinner. You know what I mean? I'm sure we can catch something right here. We already got one. Huh. 
Yeah. Anyways, we're gonna let him go because we don't really need him at all. However, let's go ahead and grab the net. And let's go ahead and uh, huh, New Jersey Nets this thing. Get it? Because the NBA's canceled. Eat that, LeBron. All right, let's go, let's go. I know that the first fish, all right, the first fish just uh, realized what was going on and she skirted over that way. This may not be an easy task. Okay, oh snap, oh snap, got one. We got one, baby. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, looking kind of pale. Oh, we almost had another one, but we missed him. Let's see, we can get him, we can get him. Eat that! We're gonna have to make a guess that he's in the corner. Is he in the corner? Hey! Now we got two fish. One fish, two fish, three fish, four! I'm gonna go ahead and put one fish, two fish in here. This right here, to the normal person, looks like an average five-gallon bucket. However, it's not, because here at Kennel Great Outdoors, we don't have much, and because of that, we use our imagination. So right now, we actually have a transbiotic Antico fish transporter. And uh, it's really good, and it's actually perfect for transporting fish. So so if you've got one of these transbiotic alpha transporter fishes, you can transport fish like a professional fish biologist like me too. Thank you for your service. I'll be here all week. I don't know what I think I'm doing. There's still a fish in here I need to get him. Wait a minute. Unless he grew legs and ran away. <laughs> nope, nope, there he goes. He definitely didn't grow legs. Oh, he's so quick. He's so quick. He's so quick. He's so quick. But is he quicker than me? Ha <laughs> ha, I didn't think so. Okay, yes he was. Okay, 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 okay. Mm. Did I get him? Did I get him? Did I get him? Hey, I got him! Eat that burrito. Burrito, you are pretty fast, but you will never be faster than me. Eat that burrito! Alright, sweet, we got all of our prisoners. Let's head on down to the park and give these guys a quick release. I'm sure they'll be excited about it. Maybe, maybe not, you never know. I don't speak fish, why don't you ask? Boop, 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 boop. Next thing you know, here we are, guys. We are at the stinking pond. Oh, I don't know if you can see there, but Jack and Jill and Burrito, they're just in here chilling. Now, to release these guys, we got a lot of Options. But listen guys, since we actually had these guys at pets, well, I think we're going to release them a very calm, maybe um, emotional way. Might get a few fake tears going, if you know what I mean. Good for you too. But we are going to do it in a very professional manner. So, I'll just pick them up. Yeet! Oh, yes sir, there they go. You ever seen fish fly? Yeah, I have too. I just watched them. Why don't you just tell us where the verse is coming from? Hey, thanks, buddy. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. So that's talk that verse is talking about like when you get saved and you become a follower of Christ, and uh, you have faith in Him. In diligence, you should be, you know, working to make yourself a better person. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and so on. And then the last one I think is interesting. The end goal is to become charitable. Charitable is more than just like the charity we're thinking of. Yeah, it's like a love for the community and a love, a love for people. You could really talk about that for a long time. And subscribe, hit the like button. I want 10,000 likes, guys. I don't know if we can get it, but if we can, let's just uh, go ahead and give yourself a little dab. Cause we don't care if it's out of date. Just like those hot dogs that we always fish with. Remember? Yeah, yeah, shout out to my mom. But come on, mom, just throw it away.